Hey everyone, welcome to Wild Woodland Lavender Farm. My name is Carrie. I just wanted to take you around here on the farm to see how things are going at the end of winter here as we transition into spring. Beautiful day today. Uh, we've pretty, Last week we had about a week of rain, so this weekend it started clearing up and we're getting some really nice weather now. I think uh, things are going to start waking up and uh, start growing, so I'm really looking forward to that. Although usually in this area we get like another freeze uh, as we progress into spring, so I don't want things to start growing too soon, but I think we're on a good track so far this spring. But I just wanted to show you my chickens. It's been a while since I've updated on them. Um, right here are my lavender Orpingtons, and um, I got these from Murray McMurray's Hatchery and last spring, and they're fully grown now. And the three hens here have actually started laying eggs for me. They're still on the smaller side, but um, they are producing. And I had got 10 of them and um, lost three. No, I had the surprise chick. So I lost the surprise chick and then, let's see, I have four. I had lost three, I think, yeah. So I ended up with seven. And of the seven, I had four roosters and only three hens, and they uh, they were causing quite the, the havoc in here with the four roosters. So uh, I was able to find uh, people who would take the extra roosters. I didn't need that many, obviously. And uh, one went to a friend, and then I sold the three others for like five bucks each. Um, with my other chickens here, I still have actually um, two extra roosters. I have Ricky who originally came with the house when we bought it and then um, I don't know if you can see him, Higgins right here and then Magnum, you can't see he's right there, he's gray and cream. Um, those two were hatched by a friend of mine and given to me along with all the other chickens that they hatched. Um, so I have those two. I want to keep Higgins and then Ricky. Um, I'd like to keep them all, but I just, I don't have enough hens to keep all the roosters happy. So I need to get rid of two of the hens, or sorry, two of the roosters. So I'm going to pass along Magnum. And then there's another rooster who was hatched here on the farm. And um, I don't see him right now. Oh, here. I don't know if you can see him running. Maybe. He's right there. Um, walking this way, a nice golden red color, golden red, I don't know, is that a color? Um, burnt orange color, maybe? I don't know. He's quite pretty too, and uh, he's, he's a funny little character, I named him Reginald. <laughs> but I just, I don't have as many hens as I need to for to keep that many roosters uh, happy. So. <laughs> There's a lot of uh, infighting over the girls, and my girls start to look a little ragged. But um, anyway, I still have those two to pass along. But they, the hens have started laying now that winter's over. Winter's over. Um, I'm starting to get almost a dozen a day now, which is really nice. Um, we sell some of the eggs uh, to help pay for our feed, and then I might let our boys. Um, start to help take care of them and, and earn some of the money for themselves so after they pay for feed cost of course so anyway that's the update on the chickens um well let's go around a little bit and i'll show you some of the other things that have been happening on on the farm sorry the goats are making a rustle back there <laughs> We have here, of course, the three mini La Mancha goats that I am keeping here for a friend of mine while they're in between homesteads. We have Chess and Trouble and Domino. And this is their pen where they can stay safely. And I think I'll let them out here for a little bit so they can have uh, a good time romping around in our pasture for a little bit. Can we come out, girl? Come on. Let's go. Let's go for a little walk. <laughs> don't knock over the camera. Just don't. <laughs> hey, 
girls, come here. <laughs> come on. Oh yeah. Stay here. Come on. You can stay away from there. Thank you. Go that way. <laughs> it's always fun to see the goats out here leaping around. No, you stay away from the camera. Thank you. <laughs> so you might see behind me some black plastic on the ground. I got some silage tarps to lay out to start killing off some of the pasture grass here. Pasture grass here. Um, this is where we're going to be planting some of our lavender plants. So we don't have a rototiller or anything yet, so the next easiest way is to kill off the grass so that it makes it easier for digging and um, yeah, doesn't take as long to dig out grass when it's dead. <laughs> so. That's what's happening here. We also had thought that we might start a um, small strawberry patch for you pick um, or for us to pick to sell. Um, we're not quite sure if that's what we want to do yet. Um, we're still in the throes of that decision. But for now, the plan is to just plant the lavender that I have in the greenhouse out here so that we can get it growing nice and big and strong and maybe even Stay away from the camera girls, I'm telling you. Out, out, out. Don't let the dog bother you. I'm serious. He's like a third of your size. Come on, leave him alone. <laughs> uh, let's see, oh yeah. Where was I? Side on, seriously. You get knocked in the head by them and you're gonna be in pain, mister. Uh-uh, girls, stop. <laughs> Chaos. Um, oh yeah, hopefully we can maybe even get some... <laughs> some production from the lavender this year. <laughs> and get some, some lavender buds for, for processing for whatever we're going to do with it. So, um, I think that's it for here. I'll take you to another part and we'll take a look at the trees that I planted last spring and see if they've started any growth yet this spring. Side on. Oh, you're gonna get hurt, bub. Oh, watch out, bub. Watch out, she means business. She means business. She's trying to show you who's boss. Girls, he's just trying to play with you. Yeah, he's just trying to have fun.
in the pile of hay here. Um, I have one hen who flies out of the coop, out of the chicken run, probably usually over there, but sometimes over here. She flies out every day and she comes and right here she's made a little nest and she'll she'll come every day and lay an egg right there and then she'll fly back in and be with the rest of the chickens she's a funny little girl <laughs> all right so on this portion of the pasture is where i've planted the majority of my fruit and nut trees for the food forest the rest of them are planted down in the back 40 with a bunch of blueberry bushes and then i have a few other uh, trees planted as well. A couple the oak truffle trees that I did a box opening of a, a couple months ago, a month ago. I don't know when it was. Um, I have those planted in the ground uh, right over there. But um, the majority of the trees are here. And this one right here is actually a peat, or no, it's an apricot. The scout apricot. And I'm seeing it. it's actually got some buds. Um, starting to form so we'll be getting some uh, some blooms soon and I'd better watch the weather because um, unless I do something to protect them if we get a freezing night that's really bad I could lose the blossoms and then I won't get any apricots this year which this area with apricots you have to get a later blooming apricot otherwise this happens <laughs> Um, where we get to freeze and lose the buds, and then no apricots for the year. Um, so it's a good thing I came out here to check on them because now I know that I may need to come out here and cover them, keep an eye on the weather just to, to see um, if it's going to freeze. So that's nice to see some buds on here. And um, also I wanted to talk about over here, um, let me see. It's in the picture, but just want to get more of it. So this area right over here, um, I had three trees planted. And this summer I found out that I had to dig them up and move them because this actually ended up being where the drain field is for our septic tank. So we had thought the drain field was over on that side of the farm where the black plastic is. And um, this summer, when it was super hot out here and we were drying out, we weren't watering the pasture. We were just letting it um, be dried out so we wouldn't have to mow it. Um, we started noticing that there was a really green spot right here and then some brown strips on the far end down there. And so that showed us that that's where the pipes were. Um, for the drain field and then of course the green part is from all the the liquid that they were getting from the septic tank so um, I had three three trees planted right one of them kind of on the edge and then two of them right in the middle and I uh, can't have that because the roots would get into it would interfere um, with the gravel with the pipes and can't have that so I ended up having to move them I planted two of them over on this side and then one of them farther out into um, what was beyond the fence for the hay field. There's a portion there that was part pasture for the cows from the previous owner. Um, it was kind of an L shape around the hay field before going down into the, the lower pasture there. Um, so I moved the third tree out that way. So now we have this whole area here that we can't plant trees in. Now we can do some shorter crop you know crops with shorter roots in it so we're thinking maybe trying to grow some of our own wheat or um, some other like grass type things we could do maybe some herbs that kind of stuff just uh, shorter you know roots crops with shorter roots so it doesn't disturb <laughs> the uh, drain field area so anyway let's just go around and check out some of the trees and see how they're doing here's apricot Over here, this is my favorite tree ever, the Lodi apple tree. I have lots of memories at my grandparents' house with the Lodi apple. It makes excellent applesauce and dried apples. And 
I'm seeing just a little bit of the fuzzy growth on their typical um, and you can just barely see maybe some new growth starting to happen right there. This right here was a nectarine tree, but it did not even survive last year. So if I see any new growth on it this year, I'd be mightily surprised. This is one of the trees that I had to move. Um, I'm not sure what kind it was, let me check. Yeah, Reliance Peach. So I don't see flower buds quite yet. Those look more like leaf buds, but that might change but it's obviously still good. It's in good shape still. So it did survive the winter, which is pleasing. Over here, <laughs> scratching post for the cattle that used to be here. Um, so over here, I had started this little guild, um, got overtaken by Bermuda grass, surprise, surprise. But this is a comfrey plant. It'll start popping up again. And I had two asparagus planted here and I am not sure if they survived or not. I didn't really water this area too much last summer with the, when it was so hot. So we'll see if any asparagus pops up here and here. So I just had these three things here. And then when I had to move the trees, I moved this one over here to join the guild. And this is a Northern Spy Apple. And this is one that's gonna be a good um, pollinator for my a uh, Lodi tree, because the Lodi tree is a pretty early tree. But this is looking in good condition. Definitely survived the winter. Not showing any buds coming out yet though. The pile of brush and stuff from all kinds of plants and cuttings we took from our property. And it's definitely decreased in size a lot. So need to add some more green stuff to it and get it turned and see if we can't get some good compost from it this year. And this right here is a hazelnut that I dug up from somebody's house. They were getting rid of it. And this last year, excuse me, there's some other brush in the way here. Um, it looks like this uh, growth survived the winter. This is all old stuff. I think it died partially off when I transplanted it, but it does still have some good uh, live stems in here, I can see. Um, I don't know if you can tell in this lighting. It's got kind of a reddish tint to it. Um, and that tells me it's alive. This one doesn't have, it's more whitish. It doesn't have just that alive look to it. So yeah, it's pretty dead. So, but it does have some that's alive. So hopefully it'll grow some more this year and I'll have to come through and cut out all the dead stuff. Again, that's hazelnut or filbert, as I grew up calling them. Uh, I think, yeah, this is the other tree that I had to move from the drain field right over there. Let's see what this one was. This was a Sam cherry. Uh, a large, sweet, dark cherry resembles being in flavor, but more disease resistant. So, yeah, this one survived too. You can see it's got some buds developing, but it's not anywhere close to blooming yet, or ready to bloom or bud out with leaves. Uh, let's go over here. I missed some of these trees over here. I see a tree that's crooked. <laughs> Might have to uh, get a post out here to straighten that one up. Um, I can't remember what kind this one was. Yeah, that's really... <laughs> really uh, pushed over here. Um, this was a Rainier cherry. Somewhat, um, it's a yellowish cherry with a blush to it and uh, pretty good cherries. I like, I like the yellow cherries along with the red cherries. Um, trying to see if this one survived. I don't see any new buds forming or anything. This part down here looks alive but as you go up it kind of looks like it's didn't do too well so we'll have to keep an eye on that one and I might need to get a new rainier cherry over here I had another kind of guild started and again weeds took over and uh, the Bermuda grass and other grasses 
Again, I had asparagus planted here and I'm not sure, you know, in these things here, I'm not sure how much they survived. Um, we'll see if anything pops up again. This was another filbert slash hazelnut and it too had a lot of dead branches this last summer, but I still see here again, like the other one. Um, oh, look at that. You can see the little red, Let's see if we can get it. Get in close for you. There's some little red, oh, you can see it? There you go. Little pinky red blossoms that are just starting out. Sweet. I didn't see any blossoms last year that I recall. You can kind of see them on this one too. Yay, that's exciting. That's not going to focus on that again. So definitely some life on that filbert. And this tree right here, it's again got the fuzz. You can kind of see, sorry, I'm a lot <laughs> focused in here. Um, you can see maybe a little bit of growth there. Still kind of asleep, that's good. Ah, what kind was this one? It's buried. <laughs> this was a Gravenstein apple, another old apple. One that my also my my grandparents also had on their property. This one's a pear. It's definitely got some new growth. You can see the greenish stems coming off here, and then it's got some good buds forming. You can see a little bit of green on there, so that's good. Good growth. Awesome. I had put the goats away earlier because I don't want them following me to the side of the field. They will find my fruit trees a tasty snack for chewing on. I can't have that. So I'll let them out on the other side where they will stay close to me, but can't have them over here. <laughs> okay, here we have another apple. This is the king apple. It's another one of those older kinds. And I can definitely see some good um, growth and some budding starting to take place, like we leaf budding, so that's good, that survived. And then we have a tree over here, and you might notice um, I don't have my trees set up in nice rows. Uh, I, I prefer to have my trees in a more um, natural fall by the wayside, fall where they may type of uh, pattern. So I just put them in random spots, and then I'm gonna build up um, guilds around them with the various plants. This is a red danju pear. Ooh, and I can see definitely some budding happening there. Happening soon. I can't wait to see all the blossoms going on here. Okay, we have some more buds happening on this tree. And I think the label is buried at the bottom, but we definitely have had some new growth here um, last, last summer. But definitely buds gonna be coming out soon. Exciting. Let's see if we can find out what kind this was. It may be a mystery. I don't see a label at all. <laughs> okay. I have record of it somewhere, probably in one of my past videos anyway. All right, this tree right over here is an English walnut tree. And it's been a straight, sturdy stick. It did leaf out. It took forever to leaf out last spring. Um, it's definitely a late uh, bloomer, shall we say. <laughs> Didn't have any blooms on it, but it took forever to bud out with leaves and I was a little bit concerned about it, but definitely has some growth. It's definitely survived the winter. So looking forward to see seeing what happens with the English walnut. The, it's a Carpathian walnut. Okay, one more tree up here. It's over this way, um, besides the two oak trees that I planted. And I'm not sure what kind this one was either. Um, looks like an apple. It's got the little frosty stuff, leaf. Um, here's the tag. 
Yep, Winochi. That's the one I thought it was. Winochi Early Apple. So it looks like it had a run-in with the lawnmower. <laughs> Poor tag. Maybe I'll scooch it up so we can uh, keep track of it better. So that one has good growth too. Survive the winter. Let's go take a quick jaunt down to the valley, the back 40, and see how those trees are doing. You can see over there the white tape fencing. Um, I made most of a video about that and uh, never produced it, edited it because <laughs> um, I couldn't keep the goats inside. <laughs> it's supposed to be for the goats and oh, they got zapped on the, the nose and the lips with it and that scared them all right. But um, if they kneel down and get their backs through, they just hop right through the fence. It, the zapping doesn't bother them that way. So. I'm going to be figuring out something else and uh, it's a shame because it was a lot of work to put all this up, but um, it's all right. We'll, we'll get something figured out to get these goats down here to take care of all of this brush because that's what we have them here for aside from giving them a place to live while well, my friend is in between homesteads. The goats are actually supposed to be working for us and clearing this brush out. so. I have a plan, it's just a matter of setting it in motion. So anyway, here, down in this valley, I have groupings of blueberries, and I put them in just kind of random shapes according to what type I have. So like, I have one, two, three, four, five berries here, and this is the, the Elliot blueberry. And, um, a lot of, some of my blueberries didn't survive last summer. It was really hot and we don't have a way to water down here very easily. So I tried to keep them watered as best I could. But at one point I just had to say, okay, either they're gonna live or they're not. And um, a good portion of them did survive. Some of them dried out and didn't make it. But um, for the most part they survived. It almost looks like some kind of critter has come along and been snacking on that. That's pretty funny. See the label there? <laughs> Wonder what's been going on there. So um, then I do have some trees down here as well and some around here. Yeah, right here you can see a strawberry leaves and that's awesome. Also planted right here with the strawberry is a rhubarb plant. So that should be popping up here soon. So I'm glad to see the strawberry has survived and it looks like it's been sending out or gonna be sending out um, runners and start spreading down here. And that's exactly what I want it to do. So I'm glad to see that the strawberry has survived and the rhubarb should be coming up soon. So this right here is another type of blueberry. Let's see here what kind, the Toro which is one when we've gone blueberry picking, that's been a popular one that we've enjoyed. And this right here is a peach tree. I think, think of the contender, indeed. And I can see some good growth. I need to come in and trim a branch here because it's uh, starting to run in to some of these other ones. So I'll need to come in and, and do some pruning on this tree already. I'm usually one to leave pruning alone, but if I see branches that are running into each other, I'm definitely gonna trim those off. But this had a lot of growth last year and um, hopefully uh, get some blossoms out of it and some maybe a few peaches this year. This right here is some comfrey. Um, and again, more blueberries. I think this was a different kind. Yeah, this is early blue blueberries and hmm, that one over there is looking good, but this one doesn't look so good. Although, I think that part's alive. We'll see. Uh, some more blueberries here. We didn't get those under bark dust like we did these. So that's on the menu, on the to-do list for this year is to finish getting the rest of these blueberries um, with bark chips. You know, we still had weeds and stuff coming up through the cardboard and bark chips here. Uh, and I can see here that we've had Bermuda grass popping through. I hate Bermuda grass. Let me say that again. 
I hate Bermuda grass. This tree here is another one that saw a lot of growth. This is a wolf apple, I do believe. Yes, wolf, wolf river apple. This one had phenomenal growth. And I think one of the reasons these did so well is because the water table down here in the lower 40 is really high. And so once their root, roots hit that water, uh, they just had phenomenal growth. So that one's looking really good too. More blueberries here. And then right there. Although that one doesn't look good. And I know that one died, it's gone. And I'm not sure how that one did. So we might have to be replanting quite a few blueberries this year. Um, this tree I think is an almond. Yes, an all in one almond. And it has life in it, I see. And it looks like it will start to be budding out soon. So excellent. And let's see, we'll do this tree next. Yeah, there are a couple other almond trees out here that did not live. And um, this one is doing good though. This is probably, yes, a rainier cherry. So I have another rainier cherry. If that other one up there doesn't live, I have this one. And this one definitely looks in good shape. Got some good growth on it. This was another nectarine and it also did not live. This was a Honeycrisp apple. Um, looks like it survived the winter, which is good. Good, good. This area, I mean, I have a golden corkscrew willow tree over there and then another one down there. But other than that, this area doesn't have anything planted in it yet. I have a willow tree that I want to plant over here. This is very marshy area. The ground gets very wet. And then we have, if we could get this cleaned out, we have a little pond there. But you can hear the frogs and the birds. All right, I love the sounds down here. This is a Bing cherry and it survived the winter just fine. Gonna have some good growth on that this year. Two more trees down here. There's Tiger Tom. Hello, Tiger Tom. How are you? He's a cat that came with the place. He likes to be petted, but he doesn't like to be picked up. This is a tree I brought with me from my old house. I have no idea what kind it is. It did bloom a little bit last year, but it didn't produce fruit for me. Um, so we'll see what it does this year. I think it might be a plum, but I'm not sure. Okay, one more tree. This, all this here is, uh, has been pulled out from in there. Just some dead brush my husband has been clearing out. Um, these were Russian olive trees, which in our area, they are a weed plant. They don't produce olives. At least I have never seen them produce olives. Um, but they like marshy areas, which we have here. And so we're, this is part of the reason we want the goats is to clear all that out, get the Russian olive trees out and plant trees that are useful for us <laughs> and not just a weed. And all of these, just to show you what kind of a weed these are, all of these little tree sticks you see popping up, yeah, those are all Russian olive. So those all need to come out. Um, but this right here was a little cherry tree, um, pie cherry tree, 
that started up from seed underneath my pie cherry at my old house. So it hasn't produced for me yet. Uh, it's still been quite young. It got a lot of growth this last year and I can see it did survive the winter. So it's exciting. The sounds of the planes flying above overhead, above overhead. <laughs> There's nothing redundant about that. Uh, they remind me of my childhood. When I lived in Ellensburg, Washington, um, I'd be playing out. We lived in a house, a little small ranch farmhouse. I don't know if it was a farmhouse. It was out in the middle of um, an alfalfa field, actually. And across the road lived some neighbors, and they were surrounded by a wheat field. And I loved playing out. Uh, we would run around those fields, and just on a breezy summer day, a plane would be flying overhead and there were like no other noises. And it's just uh, very sentimental to me when I hear planes like that flying above. <laughs> so uh, I just, I love being out here uh, where it's mostly quiet. I can hear the fans and the neighbors, greenhouses going, and that's all right. Um, but just to hear the birds, there's, I hear red-winged blackbirds. And then the frogs, oh, you would not believe the frog sounds out here. I'm gonna do a recording one of these days when it gets warmer out and uh, you'll, you'll hear the frogs in full. <laughs> so anyway, um, trying to think if there's anything else I was gonna update you on. Uh, if there's anything, I'll just do it in another video and we'll call it good. So thank you for joining me on a look at our food forest. Uh, after our second winter of being here. So we'll see you next time. Bye. Before you go, this tree got left out because it's kind of off the beaten path. This is a um, Liberty apple. And this actually, and I meant to show you guys, but it actually produced an apple this last year. It grew um, right down here. And uh, I was able to actually try an apple from a tree that I planted this year or this last year. So that was super exciting. And another before you go. This is one of the oak trees, one of the oak truffle trees I got. And I am actually seeing some formation on the top there. So it's going to be leafing out here very shortly. So I planted one here and then the other one I planted right up here by this a uh, pile of downed trees, tree limbs that my husband brought up from down below. Let's see how this one's doing. Now this one hasn't budded out as much as the last one, but it definitely has some buds going on there, so good. Okay, one more thing. <laughs> uh, we started laying out a roadway um, so that when we enter the field from the access point over here, we can come around and previously we would have to drive around this way, go all the way down there and then around and then access through that. Let's see if you're pointing out it the way I am. Ah, right down there anyway, to go down. Uh, we didn't want to have to take that trek and I planted some trees in that area. So we were going to make our own um, driveway um, down through the pasture and not a straight trek. We want it to kind of wind back and forth uh, to make it a little more natural feeling. So we started laying down. We have some railroad ties and then the black locust tree that we cut down over by our house where I'm going to move the greenhouse to. Um, we had some big limbs from that and then more railroad ties to kind of define where the roadway is going to be. On this side you can see another um, black locust log and then railroad ties there too. So that's just, we have more that we're going to be putting in to just kind of make a little driveway back to the back 40. And there's one more thing, so many things to show you. But it's another tree that I planted. So I just planted it this winter, just like the oak trees. And it's one that um, I'm growing more for the chickens, but I'll, of course, enjoy it as well. And this is a mulberry tree. It's one of the ones that I actually had in the greenhouse. Sorry for the sun there. Um, and I just, I got it planted. So I planted it right here. And um, this'll 
give some shade for the chickens and it will also give them some nice berries that they can enjoy. So that should be it. We'll see you next time. Bye.